The views expressed on this Turnbuckle Tabloid live stream or Turnbuckle Tabloid podcast episode do not reflect the views, thoughts, or opinions of the RageWorks brand, including the RageWorks podcast network, RageWorks content partners, advertisers, and affiliates. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Okay, all right, yeah, good. Yeah. So, so I'll be okay then, because I, 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 I know um, 80s, uh, you know, uh, I, Ivan, Ivan Paduski and uh, <laughs> Paul Orndorff, <laughs> you know, at those days, and then uh, UFC, I know everything about, so. No, it, it's, 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 um, for my co-host, and I, my co-host is a, is a 22-year-old young white boy from Glendale, Queens, but I had, <laughs> okay. I, I put him on to, to Stern not too long ago, maybe a couple of years ago, and he's jumped up on it. And when I told him that I was getting you for the show, he was like, "Dude, you gotta ask him about the 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 the, the winnings, the 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 three hundred thirty thousand dollars." Oh, Mark. yeah, yeah. He wants he wants to bum me out. Yeah, no, just I'm fucking around. Yeah, no, I'll tell you. I'll talk about that. No, it's, everything's cool. I talk about everything. Whatever you. How, how old are you, man? I'm I'm going to be forty four. I um. Oh, I've, so you're my age. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been I've like I can tell you I've been a Stern fan since the early, late eighties, early nineties, and um. Okay. When I I've been on the peripheral of getting guys, uh, from the Stern show on this show. I've had um Abe Cannon, who was on the Stern channels on Sirius. He's been on okay. the show because he's a big wrestling fan. So I've had him on the show. Uh, I've also had uh, James Madden, who's a comedian, who's best friends with Shuli. Oh yeah, yeah, Shuli. I, I uh, yeah, I, I, I got a uh, history with Shuli. I, 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 uh, I, I've known him for years. Yeah, Shuli, and Shuli's a big wrestling fan as well. So, oh yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think, I, I think I remember them. Yeah, I've always and I, 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 I tell my uh, my web designer, my producer, I say, listen. Although I might not get the big fish, but I'm always in the ocean. I always got the guys who are, I, 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 I have my eye on for the longest. <laughs> I heard you on, on, on Gunk. and They're funny. Aren't, aren't those guys good? Like, when, I first, I, when I first was put on to them, I was on this, this whole thing. I was like, oh, maybe, maybe let me try it out. Because I listen to Stern, the old stuff, on YouTube every day when I'm at work. And okay. when, it, when it came across that, you know, the, the things you should watch on YouTube or so, so let me listen to it. So I love the earlier gunk. I love early stuff, right? Because mm -hmm. it was like on the, it was right on the, the, the level in which I was saying, this is why I stopped listening to Stern, you know, and, and as much as I loved him, <laughs> is why I stopped, you know, but you know, these days it's, it's, it's kind of off and on the way that they run stuff. But when I heard you recently on there, you made wrestling references yeah yeah and, you know the heel uh, thing he, and talking about the key uh nikolai volkov i was like oh he's got to be somewhat of a fan <laughs> you know arm uh, uh that guy's corny man he knows this shit like he uh one episode i forget maybe it was when he had dominic barber on there uh at the at the end of the show he sang the uh nikolai volkov you know that yes that fucking song oh, oh, yeah yes. yeah <laughs> <laughs> He sang that then I was fucking dying. But uh, before we continue, I just need uh, just just to check the audio. Just uh, if you could cut an ID, let me make sure this phone. Sure. Stops. Stop ringing the phone. Have, 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 <laughs> this sound okay? Oh no, you sound you sound good. I just gonna make sure on my end because my phone is uh, there's a phone that's ringing over here. Okay. Shut up! Cut the phone off. <laughs> <laughs> you ever thought about doing um 
I I know you have your 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 radio show out in Long Island, but um, you ever thought about doing your own podcasting? Uh, well, I got um, it, it also goes on Twitch, but you know nobody goes on on Twitch because you gotta sign up and all the bullshit. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh some of like uh, the best parts there, and I'm gonna uh start a, a YouTube uh, channel and and you know just uh, short pieces. So um, yeah, so I guess that's considered a podcast, I guess, right? Listen. As long as anybody, everyone can see the beauty that is Casey Armstrong, because you are a fucking oh, gorgeous looking on, man. man. Even to this day, uh, you son of a, a bitch. How That's the nice fuck you, did you do this? Do you still work out? Uh, yeah, but but it's, it's it, I don't I don't go heavy anymore. I don't do any of that. We're shit. not doing the creatine anymore. We're not getting lost. <laughs> no, no, no. I, the last thing I did was I took HDH not too long ago, but I don't know with with with. Uh, with with my health, I, I don't know if uh, that's the right thing to do, you know? I laugh because I, I was listening to you the other day when um, Howard was I was asking you about um, about he he wanted to get into creatine. And you walked in the studio, and the mm. first thing is that, dude, you got to get large, bro. <laughs> I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. crying. So, yeah, I just, just cut yeah, an idea. How, how big are you? How, how, how big a boy are you? Uh, listen, let me tell you, I work in psychiatry. I work. Uh, okay. I'm. I. I am. Uh, what people may consider as an orderly, but w- th- it's more more uh, intense now because it's more as crisis intervention and stuff. So um, uh-huh. I'm about like four eleven, almost six feet, maybe running about uh, two forty five, two forty. Oh wow! So did you do? Did you wrestle in in, in high school? I played football. I played. Uh, I, I played um, semi pro football for a bit. Um, Holy shit! Yeah, I was very, I was athletic. I was played RB, played tight end, played a, a little bit of linebacker. Oh here, my yeah. god! But I, well, I, were, I were, you, were you always that big when you were playing? No, 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 no. I didn't get bigger until later. No. It, it, What'd I, you play at? What, 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 what did you? Were you fullback? Yeah, I played. Um, I played a, a bit of full. Uh, I used to like. I used to like playing tight end as well more, but um. Okay. Yeah, it, it was. It, I was. I, I. I couldn't really. I was. I was. I was. I was that guy that basically. If you needed me to go then for third down and you knew I was gonna get hit across the middle, fuck it, I'll take it. I was like, I didn't care. Right, right. You, you yeah, you you put your hat on somebody. Yeah, right? exactly. I I made sure that, mm-hmm. and especially if they needed a a, a blocker on uh, to, to on the blind side, I was there for them. But I it, I didn't get bigger yeah. until later on. You but didn't what? I didn't I didn't get bigger until later on and then later on in life. That's when that's when my my size comes in. You know, I get I, I, I get so, that look so, when I walk through the doorway. Semi pro, man. So you must have been pretty big. I mean, if you, what you, what'd you play around? Two ten, maybe? Yeah, probably. Yeah, maybe, maybe it was teasing around two, about two, two or five, two hundred, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you were probably really fast. Right? Yeah, I was. I was. I was like second, second or, or off the uh, off the bench. I was. I was pretty good. It was. It was okay. It's nice. just like I couldn't. Nice. I couldn't like um. Like I said after a while, it, it just. It, 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 not like you. You fucking you. You're 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 a guy who who earned his stripes going going to college and, and getting that position, man. <laughs> no man, dude, I didn't play semi pro though, man. That's uh. That's, Shit, that's you a, played college ball. You, you 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 are you you are a big man on campus, and it was well earned. I I was following your your your, your records and stuff. I looked you up. I knew. <laughs> uh, man, so 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 are you? Uh, what are you doing? You just you, so you just lifting now? Is that what is that what you got going on? Pretty much. Sure. Right now, I'm lifting a. a uh, 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 twelve case of um, Dos Equis. That's what I'm doing right now. But <laughs> that's what I'm doing now. Not, dude, not a bad thing, man. I mean, age it, it happens to us all. I didn't know it. It, it happens uh, all of a sudden, man. It's like, oh my god, now I'm fucking old. Wow. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but not you. You age very well, sir. You have you you you, oh, well, you <laughs> found a fountain of youth somewhere along the line. I was looking at pictures of you recently. <laughs> I said, fuck it, this fucker doesn't fucking change. Jeez, that's 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 too, you're too kind, buddy. Please tell me, please tell me that the ladies are still still throwing underwear at you. Gotta be, has to be. No, I, I, I uh, no, man, I, I, um, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a single guy, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, we're always looking, but you know, now is not the time to be single. You know, with all this shit going on, it's not, it's not the best time to be single. <laughs> I say with all this shit you know? that's going down. Yeah, but you you look at you look at what, um, and we're gonna discuss it. 
with because of uh, of you now being this prolific author, who the fuck knew Casey knew how to fucking write? Like who the fuck saw that shit coming? <laughs> and and but and and me, like I said, me being a stern fact, I knew you was into um, books and reading and poetry and poems and shit like that. And you also was into Henry Rollins writing and stuff like that. But yeah. who the fuck knew that you were gonna be able to pull books out your ass? How do how, yeah, how did that happen? Seven ten SAT man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But how did that happen? Yeah, how, not, what, not the British. What 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 put you what put you to 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 put pen to pad and start putting together the, some words and writing, man? Um, I you know I I I had a uh, that's you know what what I did for Howard it kind of you know but they were dick jokes you know they were they were um you know they were they were just the juvenile stuff and then you know it's it's it, it, I had a creative writing minor in uh in in college so mm. I. I I could write, just I, I don't know what a verb is or an adverb and all that stuff. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Compound complex sentences and shit. Yeah, I don't know what any of that is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't have to add, add just deal with that. <laughs> but have you always been like a thing to, to where when you when you left Stern or that you figured that that would be one of your outlets to do to be to be a writer to be an author? No, I know. I never I never thought that. That only came about when I started interviewing these people. That uh, were were you know their stories were pretty incredible. So I just I uh, thought uh, it was kind of uh, you know a, a neat idea to you know to talk about uh, these people and how I got to know them and what I took away from it because you know I've been a dirtbag for so long. So why not uh, you know meet good people? So that's kind of where that came from. No, I mean, and look look at the subject matter. Great women. It's such a it's such a one eighty from how people will look at yeah. it. the producer former producer of the Stern Show is doing no. a the, the two books yeah, about I mean, well, great well, I mean, women. I'm sure, I'm sure you 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 found out that uh, you know when you were twenty two you I'm sure that you're you've changed a lot since you're twenty two. You know it's, it it happens. We get we get older, man. Yeah, and and, and I also tie it to also because you know. Um, how much you you were so close to your mom and stuff? You and your mother had this. Yeah. Your, your mother's still around, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, she is. She, yeah. She's uh, you know, we're real tight. She's uh, yeah. Please, very, get, get, very important to me. I would have I would have been uh, a very um, very inclined to have been a fly on the wall to 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 watch anyone try to say something ill in front of you in front of your mom. Cause it could have been oh, a, no, it could have no, been a wrestling match not. there. <laughs> it could have been. <laughs> it would have been chair yeah. shots and shit there. But yeah, it, no, I'm, I'm sure you're the same way. Oh, definitely, definitely. I'm an I'm an I'm an only child from mom, so I it definitely. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, so you know what I'm talking about. Oh, definitely, definitely. But um, mm-hmm. before we before we 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 continue, for you guys who don't know here on Turbuckle Tabloid, my listeners, honestly, I don't give a fuck. If you listen to this right now and don't know why this is happening, if if we don't talk wrestling, I don't care because I have. <laughs> I, I, I he's like he's he's one of those guys that I would have never thought that we were gonna have on a show, and just by pure luck, I said, you know, fuck it. Case has said that you know he doesn't really does Twitter. He's not sure how to run it. He doesn't know shit. <laughs> and, and I'm the same way as well. I'm not a Twitter guy. My co-host is the one that run, that runs the Twitter. But one night I was listening to Radio Gunk and I said, you know what? Fuck it. Let me just I, let me just send him a message. And you responded, and I didn't even get it. My co-host sent it to me. And he goes, dude, Casey said that. Uh, uh, give him a call. And I fucking mm-hmm. marked out. I I lost it. I was like, "You gotta be fucking kidding me, Casey oh, Armstrong!" Oh man, that's so fucking cool, man. Thank you. Former producer of the Howard Stern Show in the better and possibly the best years of the Stern Show. You was there for the nice chunk where you had Jackie, and you had Artie. Mm-hmm. You had the good years. Yeah, you you think you think that was uh, that was probably the best. I. I think it, it was uh, probably when Artie got there. I, I, that's what I'm thinking. I, that was my favorite. What's your favorite? I've always been inclined to be a uh, Billy and Jackie time because I love when Billy was oh, there. Oh, so, okay. So, so you go back there. Okay. Yeah, I, go. I heard Billy. I never. I wasn't listening when Billy was on, but uh, I, all I hear is awesome things about him. Yeah. And uh, when you go, when you when you're able to you know, just go back and listen to uh, on YouTube and such, when they because finally they don't. I don't think they they're policing it anymore. Um. 
the Billy days, it was so great. But when Jackie was there and you were there at the same time, and especially when <laughs> when when you started stand up, and Jackie and, and, and Fred were helping. <laughs> I'm I'm telling you I'm a historian I know this when they were right you know, you know what I hate funny. <laughs> yeah 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 dude that turned that turned out to be like uh you know when you when you first start anybody will tell you when they first start stand up they're horrible mm-hmm. it's it, it's really hard to do man and and the the hardest thing to do is to uh, after you bomb is to get up there again. Because it's it's a horrible horrible feeling. Like you you're you're a, a football player. I mean, it's like you know when you fumble and they pick up the ball and they run for a touchdown. Uh, it's it, it's like that. You know what I mean? And it's 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 getting back up there was the hard the hardest thing. And you know I ate it. Every comic will tell you that they they do. And it's a horrible horrible feeling. Don't let anybody tell you that it's not horrible because it is. You it even horrible. You even equated it. With, I remember. I tell you, like I said, I remember the show where you said. I've been in games, big games, where I've thrown interceptions ah, for touchdowns, hey. and you're like, stand up is far worse <laughs> when you yeah, eat, when dude, you eat so shit funny. up there. You, you remember that? Holy shit! Wow. I'm telling you, I I know, I know, I I know my Casey. He's my man crush. I know him. I know him oh, so well. That's, that's fucking cool, man. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah, it's, I think I, I remember that now. You said, wait, you just brought back a memory. I think I, I re. I, Equated it to throwing an interception for a touchdown. Yeah, exactly. Bomb at stand up is like totally. He's like, you're like, dude. They, they, you know. I remember when the first time you did it, and you was ready, to, <laughs> and you was ready to, you were ready to quit. And that's when Howard yeah. and the guys was like, no, 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 we we're gonna get you the material, and it became the you know what I hate material, and totally. And they got yep. so upset because after a while, you took with it, you took it, and you ran with it, and they were like, even Dominic called, and he was like. Casey, you're in such a dark place right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh but my the, god! Some of, the, some of the stuff they wrote was so funny, right? <laughs> exactly. It was just. I, I can still remember some of that shit. Yeah, that was. Uh, I remember <laughs> the best one I liked was. Uh, uh, is, you know what I hate? I I hate when uh, I'm right in the middle of, of get, <laughs> I'm I'm right in the middle of playing tackle football with the kids in my neighborhood, and they want to get dressed. <laughs> There was yeah, always I would think one. There was always man. one that got bleeped, and I never knew the what was the fucking punchline. And you, <laughs> which one was it? I don't know. It started. As, you go. You know what I hate, and it automatically cuts, and <laughs> it just like, and everybody goes, "Oh my god!" <laughs> oh man, yeah, there was some of them were really dark, man. Um, uh, have but, you, you, you know, ever thought about doing it again, going back thing, on stage? You, know? you ever thought about going back on stage and doing it? You know, in this in this day, uh, this day and age, if I uh, have so much respect. I mean, I, I I was never smart enough to write like uh, Brian Reagan. Uh, Brian Reagan, you know, he did like clean humor. Seinfeld did clean humor. Right. I was, you know, I was a guy that uh, that you know did uh, work blue, and it's a lot easier to work blue. And I don't think you could do that these days, uh, unless you're like Bob Levy, and somehow he he gets away with so much stuff because he's just uh, such a pro at it. He's so good at it. Do you see how how times has shifted on us that fast to where mm. we went to you know shit jokes and uh, racial humor to now you can't even fart on stage without somebody getting offended by it. That's what I, you know, what? and that's 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 what I'm I'm seeing. I I, I see that. Well, we we never did uh, colleges mm. for that reason because back then the colleges were were kind of like that, but now it seems like. Uh, every every club is like that. Just the way uh, every, everything is now. Everything is everybody's so sensitive about everything. And, and and plus, I'm doing something different. So I I, I couldn't go back to you know to that uh, atmosphere or that type of humor. Even though I am still immature and I still think that stuff is really funny. <laughs> no <laughs> you, shit. You know? I, I I could only imagine what a what a what a Casey from late '90s to the Casey to 2020. Has transformed mm. into it, it. It couldn't be that much of a transition. It's like, yeah, I get it. You're doing these very prolific and and, and honorable books for, but still, you, you, there's still a dirtbag hidden in you somewhere. There's still some dirt. Oh, dude, you're, you're 100 you're 100 right. I mean, you are what you are. But the only thing is, that now I got to report to uh, somebody that uh, or some things that I'm scared to death of. Uh, but I do believe uh, I do have faith now. And uh, that uh, becomes more important than anything. 
Yeah, and and that's that's something that is a, is a is a it, it's a it's a it's a balance that I feel as though that people don't understand is like yeah you know you have your faith you have a belief and such but you you still could embrace and and, and enjoy things that are not so you know honorable you can still enjoy the risque stuff and and have fun and laugh. Uh, are, are, are we drinking or do, do we have a couple of beers? Do we have a shot? What are we doing? No, no, I know, dude, I'm with you. you. You know, that's a great point that you brought up because uh, for a while, uh, you know, I was still doing stand up when I, I, I started to, uh, you know, uh, find a, a faith uh, at the Calvary Chapel in, in Costa Mesa. That's in California. Mm-hmm. But I was still doing stand up and, and my act was, was, it was filthy. And I had uh, there was there was one I think think he was a pastor I believe he came out to see me at the at the improv, and uh, I was crushing. And then afterwards I said to him I said hey, you know I I I know this was not uh, something that you would normally go to, but do you think I'm doing wrong? Do you think I'm not edifying God in any way? And he goes, you know what, Case, look, you made all those people laugh here tonight, and that's more important than anything I, I everyone knows that this is just a joke and those people had a good time they smiled and they had a great time so the lord is using you to do that so what you said is uh, is pretty true i i believe what you just said yeah it's very forward thinking because you know we in and especially with the the, the times in which we live now where you know, mm-hmm. there's there's this um this one side against another side uh, in our social climate but Nobody looks at the middle yeah. of the road, and I think that's the middle of the road kind of ideal that we look at. It's like, listen, you have your faith, you have your beliefs and everything, but you can also laugh and enjoy the risque. A little yeah. Bit. It, it, it's, it's fine. It's, it, it's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. There's a lot of people that say, oh, you, know, you, you, you can't talk about stuff like that if you're a Christian or whatever. I don't believe that. I, 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 think, I, I take what, what that pastor said to me, and he said, if you're bringing joy to people and, and it's not mean spirited and you're not hurting people, you're making them laugh. It's immature. It's juvenile. I mean, what's wrong with that? Right. Yeah. It, 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 I've always felt that for me, um, as much as, uh, as I appreciate, you know, what the, the, the blessings that I've gotten in life, either be working hard for it or it just happens out of nowhere. It doesn't make mm-hmm. me a bad person to sit there and, and enjoy dick jokes. Like, <laughs> it doesn't make yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't I, you're right. I don't think it does. I'm with you on that, brother. So when you, yeah, I, totally. I, I, don't, I don't want to go into the whole history of how uh, you got into uh, the, the Stern show and stuff like that because it, do your fucking research, people. This fucking guy's awesome. But, <laughs> <laughs> fucking guy's amazing. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, uh, trickle down to the, the the wrestling stuff that you remember. But um, sure, bud. You, you, you came on the show. A young man out of straight out of college. You worked your ass off to get there. You bust your ass uh, dropping um, emails and stuff the way you did. You got on that uh, on the show. Um, what was the first big task as a, as a producer they put you on, if you can remember? Oh, that's a great question, man. You know, it it was when I got there, and you know, Stutter and John would leave. You know, when the show was done. He, he would leave right after the, the show because he, you know, he didn't work, uh, you know, on the production side of it or whatever. So they got a call at the last minute. They needed someone to go interview or go to the Marv Albert press conference. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 dude, I got to tell you, man, I, you know, look, I've been embarrassed before. I, I, I felt like a douche before. But there is nothing that can prepare you. And that's why I have so much respect for John when he used to do this stuff. To go into one of these press conferences and yell out these ridiculous questions that they write for you, <laughs> and and, and uh, everyone hates you, and everyone stares at you, and they start taking pictures of you, and all of a sudden you turn red, and, and you're the most hated person in the room because then it, it chases the guy off. Uh, but then later, you know, you could look back on it and they say, you know, that's kind of funny asking Marv if he wore his hair to bed. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the funny part about that was that you held yourself well because even afterwards <laughs> when the 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 other reporters was asking you, yo, who sent you? And you was like, Joe. He was like, Joe who? Joe Mama. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. telling you, this is yeah, I, I it's scary that. how I remember this shit. <laughs> wow. Yeah, 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 dude, afterwards, you know, like I'm supposed to be <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm right out of college and I'm supposed to be this professional 
guy or whatever, and then this other like reporter who, if he saw me in the street, would would never call me a a hole or anything like that. And he's like, you know, we waited all this time for this guy, and you chased him out, you a hole. And you know, I'm sitting there, I'm just I'm just taking all of it, and I I was embarrassed, but you know, it's a different. It, you're not you're not on the street anymore. You're uh, now I'm a reporter. <laughs> and, then, and then the guy, the guy goes and he goes to touch your mic, and he's like, "Don't touch my mic." And you're like this, this right, imposing, yeah. intimidating <laughs> figure. He's like, "Don't touch my mic." I <laughs> thought <laughs> I was gonna smack him. Oh, uh, so so you're you're you're, my mic. <laughs> you're in the world. You're you're in there, and um. What, what what was like your big your big bookings for the show? Because I remember you had the singing the singing sidekick uh, the sing, the singing oh, sidekick. Yeah. It's fucking hilarious. Um, but what was like your <laughs> what was the big bookings that you had for the show that that I got over on Howard when 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 you when you got him on the show? Okay, cool. Yeah, another good one. Uh, um, so that's how I got in there was the singing psychic. That's that's the girl the the woman I had. Hey, in college, tomorrow's gonna I, be a rainy <laughs> day, and then uh, Bill Clinton's gonna be out of office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he told me like before he goes, "Sing." I want you to do what you did when you did when you did it in college because he heard my tape in college. He goes, "I want you to do exactly what you did." So uh, that's that's what brought her back. She was she was funny, but then. I found, uh, uh, let's see, El- uh, I heard about Elliot Offen, so I researched him. I brought him on. I, he's still probably my favorite. Mm. Uh, and Beetlejuice, uh, I found down there at uh, 5 in the morning one time. Uh, he was being thrown by his manager. So, uh, yeah, we, so we, we got him on. And then, uh, oh, you know what? I don't know if you remember this. You got to be a real, you got to be like Arm, Arm Nuda from, from Radio Guns. Johnny Mud Mudman. Johnny Mud uh, Mudman, the 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 one that competed with Fred. Yeah, you remember him? <laughs> of course. I was just, like, oh my yeah. god, I know what you know. <laughs> the things are gonna change. Oh my god, I need yeah, a life. Yeah, Fred's album. I need awesome, a dude. life that I actually remember this shit. <laughs> yeah, no, you you got a good memory, man. I, I, but th- I thought that guy was so funny, and I thought Gary was really funny with that because Gary just tooled him up i mean yeah. verbally just just uh just beat him down he goes well what is so special about you why are you the most talented man ever and i just remember just uh, just cackling thinking it was so funny it was so many uh people on there that were that were really funny i mean you know if he was doing a bit he had us all fooled but i don't think he was and that's why it was probably so funny you were also around when because howard wasn't a big he, he's not a, a wrestling guy He's not. He he he, right. he always talked about you know my grandfather used to show me wrestling blah, blah blah but he didn't he wasn't really into it. But you were there when it was around the late nineties, around the two thousands when wrestlers started getting booked on the show. Like you were there for Gold Dust. Yeah, you know what, man? It was it was right around then when wrestling was huge. Uh, that's when uh, WWE uh, was in Times Square, mm-hmm. and it, I mean it was gigantic. It was it was huge. So. So every once in a while he'd have, uh, I believe, yeah, maybe Triple H. Yes. Um, and the one thing that I, I, I feel bad about to this day, I remember some stuff, and I feel bad. We were at the MTV Awards, and uh, they off they were they would come by. I was a total dick. They uh, we were sitting, we were all on the air. This was the drinking show. Oh and, my uh, god! The, the publicist the publicist would come by and offer up, you know, who they got, and uh, somehow it got. Uh, it got to us like, hey, do we do we want the rock on? And uh, I was such a jerk. I said, give them the people's no. You and, passed uh, on the rock. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I I feel bad to this day. Uh, not only I don't not just that he's the rock, but because you know I, I I guess we were drinking that day. I said, but but right. you know that was a really rude thing to say. And and if I have if I could ever apologize to him, I would. Uh, but I was. But at least you were, you were, you were, you were, at least you were aware of his catchphrase. Like, you, <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, he was, he was big back then. He was huge, right? I mean, wow. Uh, I mean, he could, he could be the, the, one of the most talented uh, actors around uh, today. I mean, the guy's just talented in everything he does. He was a football player, too, like you. Yeah, and he, he ended up, um, not too long after that, that's when he, he broke through and he was doing, um, he started movies after that. 
So you have what yeah. you had him at like the cusp of what him breaking out of wrestling and he's like, Yeah, I'm gonna pass. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, I just like wait, yeah, at, at the time it was just like um you know, it was we weren't taking like many many wrestlers. I, I as you know, we we talked I was into the the eighties, uh, like I think eighty four uh, when the first WrestleMania, I think the first WrestleMania was it Hulk Hogan and and Mr. T was that the first one? Yeah, that's in um eighty five. Yeah. So it's so, okay around eighty five. So my my favorite guy was Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Okay. Do you remember him? Of course, please. You as a matter of fact, I yeah. I can imagine that that's what the physique he was looking at. That's why you did the heavy tanning. You had to you had to make sure. Yeah, that, dude, that guy was that guy was shredded. Man. Exactly. And yeah. I, he must have been he must have been like he was probably. Uh, to twenty to twenty five, but but uh, but ripped. I mean, just probably just just uh, ripped. Like a wind throw, like yeah. it was going out of style, you know. Mm-hmm. Was your um who who was it that introduced you to wrestling? Was it your dad? Because I know that you were you you did wrestling in 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 high school and stuff like that. But was your dad into like outside of wrestling, or, or your father was that guy's like that's not real wrestling? Uh, yeah, I think my my old man uh, and my family had a, a wrestling camp, which is good, amateur wrestling, folk style wrestling. Right. And uh, it's, it's the it's the the kind that uh, you would see in high school and stuff. And every every summer, I would spend my whole summers up there. He'd have Olympians come in, and uh, I you know I saw I, I got burnt out at wrestling by the time I was like fourteen, you know. But uh, I I, um, I I got into uh, the professional wrestling. I loved um, uh, Ivan Putsky, uh, Junkyard Dog. Uh, this was before, uh, what's his name? Um, um, the guy with the tassels on his arms. Uh, Ultimate Warrior? Yeah, right before that. It was kind of like where, where I was. Kamala. I loved Kamala. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you remember the Ugandan giant? Of course, a Ugandan headhunter, yes. <laughs> he's, he's, he's hit his stomach. Uh, he, he didn't uh, speak, but then you find out like when uh, uh, once the mics went off, he's like the most prolific speaker ever. He's like almost an English teacher. And shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like sideshow Bob. Kinda, you know? Exactly. <laughs> but dude, I saw a uh, I saw a thing on YouTube about him, and it was really sad actually that he after wrestling. Uh, I guess a lot of these guys like kind of in football too. A lot of them just don't save their money and. He got diabetes, and uh, I think he had to have his leg amputated. Yeah, uh, you know, it's 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 a. Uh... Hey, let me ask you something. Sure. You must have loved. You must love the movie The Wrestler, right? Uh, yes, I was a fan of it. Yeah, it's it's funny because this previous uh my previous episode, my co-host, like I said, he's a 22 year old white boy from Glendale, never uh-huh. he had never seen it, and this was the first time that oh. he watched it, and he had his thoughts about it, and. Yeah, it's it's one of those movies that uh, makes you think about the grind that these guys go through. Yeah, and it's it's you know I I I look at it deeper than that. You know, it's 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 kind of like I because I I actually met the writer, and uh, man, even that song by by Springsteen. Yeah, uh, it's just brutal. I mean, the movie is brutal, but I thought it was so well written, and it's it could be wrestling. It. it it could be ping pong. It's somebody who was once at the top and it's how, you know, he's working uh, in a deli and he's, you know, he's, he's feeling all the effects and he's still trying to capture that. It's just, it's really, really sad, but I think it's pretty real. And I think that happens to a lot of people when they don't want to give something up. I also think that it could correlate to you as well, because you went through your, your, your hiccups and your, in your tribulations as well, because you know, yeah. um, like I said, I, 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 you were one, you were one of the guys on Stern that I always, I always looked. It's like if, if, like in the hood, we would say I looked out for you. Like I always was looking out to see how KC's doing, and when you left, it, it you, you went through a like a real dark period, and um, mm. so you, you, you could correlate, you could understand how what. What the, mo- the the movie was like? How did you find your way back to um to basically finding I, I guess what we would consider normality in your life? Yeah, hey, great question, man. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, you're right. I I, I I was never you know a, a, a big star like uh, the the Ram. Uh, that's the character that <laughs> Mickey Rourke plays. Right? Randy the Ram. <laughs> the Ram. 
You might, you know, you say, you say that, but honestly, there's so, so many individuals who are Stern fans who would think, who would equate you and be like, I, they would even say that you were probably even bigger than fucking like Baba Booey or than Gary because they loved you. There was nothing not to like about you. Oh man, that's 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 really nice. I, I appreciate, it. but maybe in that world, uh, in the in the, the Stern universe, maybe. But you know, a lot of a lot of the people. I, thankfully, I never got caught up in that. But a lot of the people that were uh, on the show a lot and, and uh, got on the air a lot, they they got this thing where they thought that they were the celebrity, where in fact they just they worked for one or they were just part of uh, the show. It, the people when I did appearances. They weren't coming to see me. They were coming to see the guy that worked for Howard. Cause right. Howard was the, the guy, you know, and, and I, I guess that was one thing that I always had in check, kind of. I, I never had an ego, so that that kind of worked out. But um, you're right. I After I left, uh, there were some real dark times, and, you know, at, at, there were times when I was working with Howard. I mean, we we got that special treatment, you know, we could, uh, you know, do these uh, appearances. And I, I always felt strange doing them because I felt like a jerk where I was like, I got to find pictures who wants this besides my mom. You know what I mean? But, uh, well, you mean, you, yeah, you, you didn't enjoy, uh, you didn't, know, you didn't I know, enjoy the gay, for you're right. You didn't enjoy the gay parade. For... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't enjoy it. You didn't uh, enjoy that, that one. I, I could have done without that one. I think. <laughs> Well, I, I, the, 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 I always worried about you know. How it, I'm, you get attached to certain individuals, and you are a guy that that I, I I worried about because I was like shit when when you went through that. And then when you had the shit with Tom Chiasano, you guys went back oh, and forth. Yeah, was, was, and then was um, you had the issues in, with with uh, just you, just you go. How the f- matter of fact, this is a question. How the fuck did you get to Alaska? <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you something, man. I, and I'll ask you. I'll, I'll turn the gun on you. Okay. You ever been? Uh, you be, ever been so in love with a with a, a girl that you do anything for him, and you know, you, you somehow you you try you do anything to try and save a relationship that was going bad. Yeah, but uh, it, it also sounds like a peyote trip or some shit to end up in fucking Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> like, what yeah, the man, fuck? It's so funny. Yeah, now it now it seems like that. But no, I was just head over heels in love with this girl, and, and uh, I I uh, she had broken up with me on a text message. So I'm like, you know, here in my my infinite wisdom, I'm like, once she, I can get up there, she's gonna see me, and she's gonna realize that she still cares about me. And I get up there, she's like, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> right. It, remi- it reminds me of my days in the college when, when when I was dealing with the college girls and. You go visit them uh-huh. on campus. It's like I didn't know you was coming up this weekend. <laughs> uh, so you I mean you were in high school and you were dating a college girl? Or yeah, something? I, 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 I've I've dipped and dabbed in certain things. You know, I, I've 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 mad. I'm not as I'm not as uh, you know uh, a studly as you were or you are, but you know the gift oh, the gap kind of works though, especially at the time when you know AOL chat rooms and Yahoo chat rooms were the thing. Oh man, I yeah, I, I, I could I could I could. Dance the panties off somebody just by words. I was that good. <laughs> wow, that's, dude, that's a talent right there, bro. That's probably why your your show is successful. I'm I'm hoping so because hey, listen, with this right now, and guys, once again, Casey Armstrong, former producer of the Howard Stern Show. I know that we don't really talk in wrestling, but I don't care. This is, I'm I'm so happy to get a guy like you. Like, I know right now they're gonna be like, wow, what a mark, and I'm like, I don't care. You know what a mark is, right? I do, of course, I know what a mark is, but oh. you know, look, I, I can, I can, uh, I can go with with all of them. I mean, I used to wrestle in a tournament that was a Bob Backlund's tournament out here on the island, and I don't know if you know that it's Sergeant Sergeant Slaughter. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I can go in that era. I, I, I can, I can still go, and uh, if you, if you want to pull up some questions from that era, I guarantee you. Uh, I'll I'll show you my worth on that. I'll I'll, I'll show you that I know what I'm talking about. We're, we're, Give me anything from uh, 80, 84, 85 or, uh, around there. We'll, we'll we'll get to that. But you also like we mentioned okay. earlier that you're into um, um the MMA, the UFC stuff. And Big time. It's, it's funny that you mentioned that because I never got the full resolution of what happened when Tom Chiasano had booked you to do a training session with ah! Tino Ortiz. <laughs> I can't believe you remember this. <laughs> Wow. 
<laughs> Holy shit. I, I never got nobody ever remember okay, that. For you guys I, who I, I stepped on you. So go ahead, say it again. I I won't step on you. <laughs> no. For you guys who who are not a historian like I am and I'm, and I'm just showing my true Mark fucking life right now. Um, Casey was booked. He, he needed money at the time because uh, apparently he wasn't making enough. Which can you just say quickly if if it's not embarrassing? What was the most that you made on that show? Okay, so so what I made from uh, Infinity Broadcasting wasn't a lot. I mean, they hired me at twenty three thousand. Wow, which, uh, really? You know, but, but with uh, you know with benefits, you know, and and, and all that, but. Uh, Two percent every year of that is two percent of nothing. So what I had to do is, and that's what everybody, all the other guys had to do too, was every weekend you go out and and you have to you have to hustle. So right. for two years straight, uh, I would go out uh, two years straight. I'd either do stand up or an, or an appearance every weekend, and then I hooked up a, a couple endorsement deals with uh, Twin Lab and a Metric. So uh, so towards the end, I was I was doing okay. Yeah, but as a producer, twenty three is like. Nothing. Oh, yeah, it's it's nothing. It's 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 uh, radio is bottom of the barrel, and um, you're not gonna get you're not gonna get rich. Uh, there's only a couple people that are gonna get rich in, in radio, especially now that podcasts are what they are. And uh, I just you you just read Joe Rogan's. Uh, oh yeah, uh, deal yeah, that he yeah, got. yeah, He, yeah, he deserves it because he's so fucking talented. That's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm, that's like hashtag goals. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're looking to yeah, do. Yeah, he's, like, he's awesome. He's yeah. all, he's a great guy too, man. No, he's he's amazing, and I'm, and and I. That's when when you see stuff like that, it it shows what true grinding is, man. And and Joe and Joe even said he's like I I, I was doing this shit for fun. I like I really didn't care. But right and right, that, I think that's the mentality that we have. I'm, we've been doing this show for almost four years, and like I said, I've been grateful because we have. Uh, wrestlers who come in, and like I said, we had guys like uh, uh, um, Abe Cannon who came in just on a whim who'll do it, and it was fu- it's fun to do, you know. Mm-hmm. But when you get when you get that kind of level of shit, it's like, wow! All right, now now the hustle it's is real. That you've, you've you've got you've come, you've, yeah. you've, you've arrived. The hustle is real. So, this, so to yeah. go to go to the the the, the, the Tom Chiasano thing, you got booked to, <laughs> and you guys really didn't know who. Tino Ortiz was at that time. <laughs> you didn't know who Tino Ortiz yeah, was man. at the time, and you, you... Well, I knew I knew who he was, dude. Uh, but but the, you know MMA was just getting started. But they, they didn't know like what uh, what this guy was. What he's a killer, right? So 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 yes. Yeah, so, so, so what you were saying is um, we were going to do these shows in Vegas, and uh, I guess that's when they they, they were doing a. Sh- they were just starting out, uh, and it was still, and it was in Vegas. So Chiasano got one of the salespeople. They said, "Hey, why don't we put Casey in?" Uh, the, he got pitched this from uh, something with MMA. Let's give let's put Casey in the cage with Tito Ortiz for uh, for one minute and an exhibition. Wait, now, wait, 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 hold on, wait. Ten thousand dollars. Was it sold to that, or was it supposed to be like a training session? No, no, no. He they came to me. It was an exhibition. That's what they said. I didn't care what it was. I was like ten thousand dollars. I I'd fight Tyson for that. I don't care. <laughs> I, I, I would, I would I needed, do it. You know, I needed well, the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I you know and, and look at this. It's it's a man. You know, it puts, it's, a, it's a man who could uh, who could twist me into a pretzel and, and then uh, and then you know uh, embarrass me and hurt me very much. But I didn't. I didn't care. I mean, I, and I still feel that way. I'll I still fight anybody in my old age. But uh, I really didn't know what I was going to get into. I mean, can you imagine? But then I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. Yeah. So, so what ended up happening? What, what did it happen? Did uh, what, was was it alternated? Because since Howard made a big thing about it, was it changed or shifted? What happened afterward? That's what happened. Is I said yes, and I was uh, I was going to do it. And uh, basically, I didn't know anything about uh, MMA because it was kind of it was kind of new. So I, I just thought that I'd go and I'd, I'd shoot on a guy and, and you know try and get him uh, on the ground like a wrestler, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I thought yeah, I'd be able to survive a minute that way <laughs> uh, instead of getting punched. I'd just shoot on him and then you know take the scramble from there. But Howard got the news of this and he goes, "Tom, you must be the most uh, mean." Uh, a moral, morally bankrupt person in the world that you're going to send him. He's he, they're going to kill him. 
I remember uh, Richie. I remember Richie you know, walked in. Richie remember, walked in. Remember, yeah. remember, I remember Richie like walked in. He's like, dude, the camp that he comes out of, he beat the shit out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was fucking beating up Chuck Liddell. I mean, <laughs> he's one. He's one of the best, and he's a lot bigger than me too. Right. But, uh, but, but you know, in Tom's defense, I don't think that he knew what that was. You know, anybody who goes up who's not trained and fights one of these monsters, they'll kill you if they wanted to. Um, you know, uh, and then you know maybe just to I I, I don't know how it would have went down like if. Peter would have, you know, thought he had to, you know, put it on me a little bit just because it was a big audience on the, on the Howard. That might have been it. I don't know. But, uh, man, I dodged a bullet on that one, bro. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I, 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 always, I always wondered what the fuck happened because I was like, Jesus, it's, they, they're, sending, <laughs> they're, dropping, they're dropping a stake into the lion's den for this guy's shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. See, but you, you, you understand, you know what would have happened to me. Exactly. And, uh, and they, did, they did not know. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's probably a good thing, I think, because I would still do I would do it today, actually. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> fuck it. Ten, would, just, what, um, a 10,000? Fuck it. Just go there. <laughs> Guns Ooh. scare me, man. Guns scare me. Men don't. So who um who 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 do you like in uh in, in MMA right now in the UFC these days? My my favorite and the person that got me into this, his name is Chael Sonnen. Oh, he's the, you I know he is, I love Chael, gangster. man. Chael, Chael should be a professional wrestler. He, I think he's got some something to do with that. I, I, I think so. But you know, he was the first one to to talk smack and to. To be at the the heel, as we were talking about, right. you know, right. Chel is and a then, guy. He got, yeah, he's yeah, a he's a guy. He could, he could talk the talk, and you know, if you give him if you give him the right platform and the light the right match to to, to be a part of, Chel could, could put it over in pro wrestling. Oh, big time! I mean, I, he was. I think he took from pro wrestling, and he made that. He was the first one to bring that into MMA. I mean, he, he used to just tool on. Uh, everybody from Brazil. I mean, he went into Brazil and he said, "I hate this country. I, 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 I <laughs> yeah, hate all you people. Yeah. I, ha- I hate New York." Yeah. You know. Uh, and and he 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 would make these funny jokes, like he he said the Nogara brothers. Uh, they they saw a bus when they came to New York and they tried to feed it a carrot. They thought it was a horse. <laughs> so I mean, you see, he was just totally disrespectful, and he was just that's that's uh, it basically he brought pro wrestling into MMA. Um, of course. Uh, we just heard the retirement of Conor McGregor. It does. Do you, do you mm-hmm. think he's a guy who fits into the pro wrestling world as well? Well, I, I, I gotta tell you, man, he's an incredible athlete, and uh, I, I, I don't know about you. I, I love watching him fight. I saw that last fight about uh, when he he fought Cowboy, and I mean, he looked he looked incredible. And now they're talking about him fighting uh, Silva. I, I would love to see that fight, man. But with this uh, this uh, retirement, I think it's just kind of being Connor. Yeah, is it, you think it's just um, chase, chasing the money, trying to see if he could get bigger money from them. Yeah, but you know he did it at six in the morning, and he's been known to uh, enjoy a few beverages. I guess maybe <laughs> maybe that's yeah. what he was doing. Believe me, I know. Like, oh, uh, it sounded good at six in the morning, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've been there. I know. I I know what it is to have those fucking drunk fucking tweets or whatever. What's your thoughts about um Jorge Masvidal? Oh, I love him, man. I I think uh, even though he beat up uh, a guy that I I really respect in Ben Ben Askren, he was a classy uh, gentleman. He's a wrestler, and uh, I've actually spoken to him uh, uh, a couple times. He's he was an amazing wrestler, and that. I would just love to know what would happen if he didn't get hit with that knee right away. If that fight would have went on, because right. he would wrestle the hell out of Mazadal. Mazadal would beat the hell out of him uh, striking uh, on their feet. So, you know, he caught him. He caught him at the right spot. But I really want to want to know what would happen if if that fight, if they were able to just do it, you know, a, a couple rounds. I mean, I thought it would it would have been really interesting to watch. And there's always a little luck. In all these matches. Oh yeah, definitely. And, yeah. Uh, Mas- Mas- Masvidal just, oh, man, I-, I felt so bad for Ben. Uh, but I tell you one thing though, that be- I think that belt was definitely made for him, and I think that um, Dana put it out there just for him because 
Not for nothing. Mazda, though, is a bad motherfucker, man. He actually... Oh, my God. He, he is. No, you're right. You're 100% right. And then so is Nate Diaz. Oh, and, Nate. Uh, when they... When they yeah, when they went with uh, with each other, I mean, I didn't know who was going to win that, but Masvidal effed them up. And let me tell you, the Diaz brothers, uh, and it sounded a little bit off about these guys, but those are the, those are always the guys that you, you can't <laughs> you can't uh, you can't not bet on when it comes to a fight because when you're dealing with somebody who's a little off, it's like yeah. You, 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 you can see what's going on with these dudes. It could be a little bit sun sun. Totally. By the totally. way, and I'm sure that you, I'm sure you know people like that. Yeah, you know, the, the guy. He's, I grew he's up a, with a, them. A little I, bit off. I grew up you, in you Brooklyn. I grew up guys. with that. <laughs> I know these guys. You, you grew up with those guys? I grew up with guys. I grew up in Brooklyn in the projects. Of course, I know guys like that. I know dudes like so, that. So there were guys that could fight, right? Oh yeah, it's just a little bit off, you know. You know it's, yeah, it's just, just and those were the guys. You just and they didn't yell. They didn't. Uh, they, you know, they didn't. Uh, you know, make a big scene or anything. Yep. But. Uh, if they were gonna fight you, and the ones that were quiet, those are the ones that would scare you. Am I right? Oh, definitely. And he, you, you just, you just kept them at arm's length and just knew, give them what they need, they'll be okay. <laughs> right, just yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd rather be friends with them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Just be friends with them. <laughs> uh, I don't want to keep you on too long yeah, because you, you've been so awesome to to do this, man. I'm so, like I said. No, you. dude. I, I, you, you really, uh, you ask great questions, and you, uh, you definitely uh, know your, your. You should get Arm. Uh, his name is John. You should get him uh, on your show because you guys would hit it off. By well, the way, you're, listen, you're both encyclopedias of the show, and you're both like professional wrestlers. Well, the best the best thing about that would be that um, you can help get that because you know, uh, not for nothing. I, I like I said, I listened to Radio Gun for a while, but you know, their their following got a little bit big, so I might get lost in the shuffle asking them to you know to be on my show. So maybe no, I, I, I already talked to him about it. I already talked. To oh, okay, cool. That'd be awesome. So. This would, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll hook that up, man. Definitely, this definitely. Would, this and, would be uh, something. You're, 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 you're a, uh, you're a real talented interviewer, man. You're, you're, you're a regular guy, and and uh, I, I appreciate you having me on, and I've, I've had fun with you, man. Oh, thanks. Listen, um, I, I always just practice on the, on, on the, the blow up doll that I had under my bed, and that's how I, I, I became this prolific <laughs> interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> But I got to ask for my co-host, my man, Oski. This is the guy he had to ask. And I'm like, how the fuck did you blow $330,000? Oh, yeah, yeah. I knew I was going to have to get to that, yeah. Hey, t- t- tell, tell your co-host, thanks for that. You, you, <laughs> just, uh, you made me start drinking again. No, uh, <laughs> no I, um, so I, uh, I was playing Golden Palace. And I was playing uh, Let It Ride, which is kind of like poker a little bit. And I was betting the maximum, and I got a royal flush. And I saw the I saw the the uh, the counter go straight up to three hundred and thirty thousand dollars. And I called right afterwards. I called uh, the the, uh, the the headquarters where you go and you after you put money in, you have to say yeah, I put the money in. Here's the, the number, and they put it on. So I called them, and they go, "Congratulations! It couldn't happen to a better guy." So I'm like, "Oh, this shit's real. Okay, cool, man." So. Yeah, so that's so what that was real, and it was gonna, oh, this killed me. It's gonna be tax free. I was gonna get four thousand every week, uh, but I was in a horrible depression then, and I was uh, planning on checking out. If you know what I'm talking about, yeah, it's yeah. a stupid, sad story. Yeah. But I uh, didn't. I was selfish, and I uh, didn't see the the other side how it could help other people, and it didn't mean anything because that was my plan. So. Uh, I'm, I'm embarrassed by that, and I, I, I feel uh, horrible uh, that that's what I thought. I, I was so selfish that, you know, even if I was going to do that, why wouldn't I just take that and let, you know, give it to somebody else to but make you my were, life But easy. you were also hurting. Like you said, you were making 23000 maybe a little bit more by that time. You were hurting yeah. at that time. Hey, oh, yeah, I was big time. I got to ask, are you still gambling? Um, <laughs> no, well, sometimes I'll play, I'll play like, uh, I know you like the horses here in New York. You love the horses. I love the horses. Yeah. I love, I love horses. Um, but they have this thing, uh, called quick draw. Do you know what that is? Yeah. Yeah. So, so sometimes I'll just play a couple of numbers and have them lunch out it or something like that. But as far as the, with the bookies, no, no, that's, that's when you're betting with money you don't got. And, right. uh, that can add up pretty quick. And then you're always chasing that. Uh, trying to make it right, and it never gets right. Chasing that dragon, you gotta get that dragon. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah, yeah. 
How are we doing these days, Case, man? Because, like I said. Um, do, you, do you gamble at all? No. Are you crazy? If I lose $5 on a dice game, I feel as though I should shoot myself. Are you crazy? I'm yeah, horrible. No, you're smart. You're smart with me. That's <laughs> crazy. I don't even like bet. I don't even like betting like video game shit. Are you crazy? It's ridiculous. Yeah, man. I'm with, no, I'm with you, man. I, in my old age, I've, I've seen it that way. Now. How are we yeah. doing these days, though? How, how's everything with, with, with how life is treating you? Good. I mean, I. I, I yeah, I mean, you know, working, you know, they built that that station up from nothing, and you know, now we're we're in uh, like 105 countries, and uh, you know, how the hell did you make this? How the hell did you get stuff. yourself on a conservative radio station? Uh, well, I, no, it's my station. Oh, it's your station. Oh, okay. Because I yeah, I, yeah. So I so I, I built it from, from pretty much from nothing, man. Right, right, right. Oh, oh, you talking about on the FM station? Oh, the FM right. station. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm talking about the FM station. Oh, okay. You're you're right. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a that's a Republican. Uh, I'm, I'm I guess I'm kind of like the uh, the the uh, comic relief on that because you got Hannity on there during the day. Right. Um, and then uh, it's it's all Republican, and then I come on uh, uh, an afternoon drive, and I, I think I think that it works out good because. It's 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 only an hour of uh, of nonsense of buffoonery. Everything so serious. <laughs> Those are the buffoonery. You know? uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, case like I said, I could do like hours with you, man. And and there's so much stuff that I, I would love to, to touch on, especially when we well, get talk again. You're a good interviewer, man. You're easy to talk to. Oh, uh, man, I, 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 thank I, you. I respect what you do. But he, but you know where I get that from? I I get that from my not only my personality, uh, but I also get it from listening to guys like you know Howard, you guys on the show, uh, and also listen to like O and A, Dan Patrick, shit like that. I've always been f- a fan of radio, and that's what I had a face for. I've always had a face for radio. That's basically what it was. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, Kumia is a great dude. He's from he's from the island out here. Yeah, too. man, I, I, I love I, Ant. Ant is I, awesome. Last Halloween, I believe. Yeah, he's fucking awesome. Uh, can you still fit in Great the Superman? Guy. Can you still fit in the Superman um, uh, outfit that they have for you when you when you wore it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I I I, uh, I, I go uh, exactly. I'm see, I was a a, a wrestler, so I, I uh, very particular. I have to weigh exactly two hundred pounds, or or else that means I'm dehydrated or um, uh, eating too much. A wrestler is, is never uh, happy with his weight, right? So. Yeah, so I stay at exactly two hundred. So yeah, I can, I can, I can fit in there. And is Benji still cockstrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, Benji's one of the funniest dudes, uh, most uh, the most weird, uh, funny, and uh, uh, bright guys that I know. And he's a real good guy too. If you ever met him. Ah uh, man, but uh, I, I would love to do this again if you could just like you know in in the future keep me in mind. If I reach out to you anytime, we'll... anytime, buddy. You let me know, and this I'll is be there awesome. Anytime. And I'm before I let you go with, uh, with, with with John, so you can get him on because he'd oh, be great for you too. Definitely, definitely, and that's exactly who's in the, the next one I want to get on. But please, um, let everybody know what the the book is about and what 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 uh, what, what what the uh, the prolific author uh, Casey Armstrong is. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the, the one with a seven ten SAT? Yeah, that guy. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. So thanks, man. So yeah, the book is called Simply Amazing Women. It's the the second book on the series. The Simply Amazing was the first one, and that one got to uh, number nine on the Barnes and Noble bestseller list. And this one got to number twenty three. It was a tough time to release a book, you know. With, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, you would you you would think it'd be great because people would be home and, and they would want to read. But at the same time, nobody's got twenty five bucks for a book. I mean, right. uh, it's it's tough. You know, people uh, are wondering where the next meal is coming from. So. We got to number 23 uh, on this one, and the next one, I believe, will be Simply Amazing at First Responders. Uh, just to, oh, We're just telling people nice, stories man. that need to be told, man. Uh, it, you know what? It, there's incredible people out there, man. Like I said, uh, if you want, reach out to me. I work in the first responder field. I work in, in hospitals, and I can get you I can get you some women who could, who could share their stories. And especially you uh, got some, you got some, you got some good stories, you know, people who got good stories. I'm I have you, I have you know. one. I have a woman in particular who was the front of her, her story is great because she was just um, transferred over from one hospital to another. She came from one department to another. She's working at Elmhurst Hospital, which was the hottest spot in New York City. And she got there not even two months before this whole COVID thing happened. 
and she was frontline on the line training while this was going on. So you know, oh you know reach out to me. I could actually hook that up, and you guys could talk. It'll be awesome. I would be that would be awesome. I so I'll hook you up with. With, with John and you hook me up with with this with this uh this this, this woman yeah she's and, amazing she's uh, a nurse she's we'll, a frontline we'll nurse that sounds great man she's an amazing woman but uh don't hang up yet because I need I need an ID and a drop from you so guys sure no doubt I fucking I, my hairs are standing because I had fucking Casey Armstrong on the show <laughs> Casey <laughs> but once again just so everybody know where they could get you at what your what your social media and what we could do. Yeah, uh, people can uh, hear me 24-7 if you go to WMAPradio.com. It's on now. It's uh, 24-7. It's, uh, obviously, I- I'm-, I'm talking on the phone now, so you're going to hear a rerun. But you'll hear that uh, 24-7. Also, you can go to barnesandnoble.com uh, and pick up uh, Casey Armstrong's Simply Amazing Women or Simply Amazing, the Special Authors Edition. And... Uh, Thank you so much for having me, man. I, uh, this was a lot of fun. Are you fucking and, kidding uh, me? I really I'm appreciate the, uh, you taking the time. I bow at your gorgeous presence. Are you fucking kidding me? You, <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> you too much, man. All right, guys, don't go anywhere. Stick around. We have much more installed. And Casey, don't hang up yet because got to no get doubt, no doubt. Thank I you. Need, again, I need my nice. <laughs> nice. Check it out this way. Turnbuckle Tabloid.